One of the things that I'm most excited for in the Winds of Winter is when Melisandre finally gets to the Night Fort, and we get to be in her head in a point of view chapter as she explores the ancient castle. We've seen the Night Fort before when Bran, Mira, and Jojen pass through it to get north of the Wall, but they were all kids who had no idea what was actually going on, and they weren't really trying to get to the bottom of any mysteries or live in the Night Fort the way Melisandre will probably be doing. So, when she gets to the Night Fort in Winds of Winter, we're going to basically get a point of view that is much like Ned Stark arriving in King's Landing trying to solve mysteries, except for it will be magical mysteries at a creepy, magical castle in the far north. Melisandre is the one who specifically requested that she get to go to the Night Fort, and they are working hard to restore the castle in the last book. Stannis also specifically requested that Sam show him where the Black Gate is located, so in case you were thinking maybe they're going to live at the Night Fort without digging into these deeper magical mysteries, no, they are very aware of what's going on there, and as soon as Mel gets there, I think we're going to start getting to the bottom of it. Now, Melisandre was even more obsessed with the Night Fort in some unused versions of some chapters that are stored at the Cushing Library and were found by a Reddit user named GSteph. In these unused versions, there is many more mentions of the Night Fort, and it is called the Heart of the Wall, and it seems like some of this stuff may have been taken out because George didn't want to draw quite so much attention to this big key mystery area that's probably going to feature pretty heavily in the final books. There are lots of reasons that Melisandre is the perfect point of view character for George to have going to the Night Fort, mostly because she is, in her own words, not mortal, and she's been practicing her sorcery for years beyond count. This means by being inside her head we are going to get incredible insights and interpretations of things that would be incredibly clunky otherwise, right? Like if you were having Sam as the point of view there at the Night Fort and you had to have someone explaining, oh, this looks like something I read about in a book or I heard a story about something like this. No, you don't need any of that. When Melisandre can just be like, oh, I've witnessed this magic before, or, oh, this is this type of magic, I've seen this before because I'm X number of years old, right? Melisandre is going to be the point of view who is the easiest for George to use to give us some actual answers to a lot of the questions that we've wanted to know for a long time. So then that leads to the question, what exactly is Melisandre going to find when she gets to the Night Fort? And what are they going to find if they start digging into that well and the Black Gate? and what I believe is going on there if you've seen the series, and that's what we're going to discuss now. So we'll do a quick recap for those who haven't seen it, and I actually have some new evidence and new context to add for even those of you who have watched my entire series. The series actually began at the Night Fort in a set of revelations that I came to while reading Bran's journey through it in A Storm of Swords. Specifically that the Black Gate is essentially a giant weirwood face you can walk through, that enters you into a well, which is a long upright shaft that descends from the Night Fort kitchen down to the Black Gate. But it actually goes further than that down to where it reaches water. Now, if you removed all of the ice from around this because it's built into the wall itself, what you basically have is a weirwood face in the middle of a long shaft that goes up into the air, and then what do we see at the top of that shaft? Well, there is sideways, slantwise growing, weirwood trees bursting out and growing leaves. Oh, hey, those are branches. And what do you know? That face is right where the face would be if this was a giant weirwood tree with a giant weirwood face carved in it, and the well shape is exactly like a hollowed out tree trunk, and there's water down at the bottom, which is, you know, what a tree does. It drinks water from down at the bottom and then sends it up the tree trunk, and oh hey, what do you know, the walls of this well are described as damp, almost like this is a giant tree pumping and leaking water into the wall, and that's probably because that's what it is. And when you take this into account, you have the Walter cycle, which is how you can explain how water is replaced into the wall, even though it's constantly said that it is weeping, because all of the water is drank by these trees that are inside the wall, and just pumped right back in. It's a giant self-building ice wall, and that's how it's constantly maintained, and that's probably how it was built in the first place. Now, the other thing that you need to know about being near this giant tree that seems to exist within the wall next to the Night Fort is that it is incredibly scary to be around, and it feels too cold. Bran can feel the cold radiating up from the floor, and he's terrified to be near this well. What is the other thing that brings fear and cold every time in the story? 
it is the others. When the others are near, it's too cold. That's how Cold Hands recognizes that there's some sort of trap at the entrance to the cave. He notices that it's too cold, and that means that the others are nearby. In this story, when you have something where it's described as weirdly cold and someone is weirdly afraid, it is because the others are nearby. That's just generally how George uses that as a little clue. So when you have it described as terrifying and too cold at the well at the night fort, well, I use that to speculate perhaps there is an other strapped to this well, sort of like how you see the others created being strapped to a big weirwood tree. Because if you just never untied that guy after you do the magical spell, well, suddenly you have a giant proximity-based freezer unit next to your giant water pump. And so maybe there are these bodies that are either the others or the bodies that are casting the others that are shadows out in the world, and they're using some sort of ice magic on these bodies to cast these icy shadows, and therefore, you not only have the shadow others that are out north of the wall, but you also have the wall itself, where you have these icy bodies strapped to it, used as a freezer unit, constantly fed blood by the weirwoods, and then also constantly having water pumped up there to continue to build your wall. Now, I know that may sound a little crazy if you haven't been following along with the series, but I've been laying out a lot of this evidence over the course of many videos, and on the screen you'll see some comments of some people who are becoming convinced, and if you haven't checked them out, I would definitely recommend doing that. And since I promised a little bit of extra context, there is a line from a John chapter that I hadn't even noticed before. Because yes, when Bran is at the Night Fort, George definitely does hint that the others are nearby, or at the very least he gives us the same hints of it being cold and scary for no real reason, but just having that at the Night Fort could be explained away. We would probably expect a similar description at Castle Black at least at some point, right? If there is a giant line of weirwood trees with bodies strapped to them doing ice magic within the wall, and they are either the others or the thing that casts the others, and therefore are described as being too cold, just like the others, we should get John at some point, or Sam at some point, thinking that this is too cold or colder than it should be. And we do get exactly that in Dance with Dragons. When John is Lord Commander, he's going deep into the wall for the first time, looking deep inside the storeroom to see how much meat they have for winter. And as he's feeling the carcasses and counting them out, his fingers start to stick to the meat, and he thinks that it is colder than it should be, even knowing that there is a mountain of ice above them. He specifically thinks about that, and then he thinks that still, it's colder than it should be. And George wouldn't do that, if he wasn't trying to give us a little hint to pay attention to something. And he also did a George where he hid this clue for the deeper magic deep inside some logistics. So we've covered before how he likes to hide clues in different ways, either something incredibly exciting going on and then he'll slip in a little line that's a clue right in the middle of it so that you miss it, or he'll have something incredibly boring going on, like a long page long chat about logistics and how much food they have for winter and things like that, and then he'll slip in one line about how it's colder than it should be the first time John is really deep inside this part of the wall. The point being, it seems worth considering at the very least that when Melisandre gets to the Night Fort, what she's going to find is that this whole system, this Black Gate, the weirwood tree up in the kitchen, and the well itself are a giant weirwood tree within the wall, and she may want to destroy that because she is sort of all about burning weirwoods, but then again, this one's inside the infrastructure of the wall, so at the very least, maybe she'll recognize, like, hey, maybe we shouldn't just go burning the interior of the wall down, that doesn't seem like a good idea. But whatever she does, right, she's going to want to get to the bottom of this thing magically, and so maybe she just has them, like, dig it out, something like that, and then uncovers that once she takes away the ice, there are these bodies strapped there. And George has done all of the setup for this well, which I believe is a tree, to be the key mystery at the Night Fort. It's basically the entire thing that we see Bran, Mira, and Jojen messing around with when they are at the Night Fort. They first see the Weirwood out in the courtyard, but that's actually just breaking out from this same organism. Then when they get down into the kitchens, they are staying right next to the big well, which is probably a trunk because it has the slantwise weirwood breaking out from it that's skinnier than any weirwood Bran has ever seen, and it's at an angle and breaks up through the roof of the kitchens. So yeah, these are the branches coming off this big trunk. 
Then, when Sam and Gilly show up, they descend with them down into the trunk of the tree, and then exit out of the Weirwood face and are beyond the wall. So from the arrival at the night fort, to the staying in the kitchens, to the descent down the well, and exiting out the Black Gate, most of Bran's chapter is made up around what I believe to be this giant tree, and when Melisandre is trying to restore the night fort and talking to Jon about it, he mentions how they have already restored the kitchens, which means George is once again drawing interest to this specific location within the night fort. He is reminding us of the kitchens. Then, as I mentioned earlier, you also have Sam bringing up the Black Gate to Stannis and him demanding to see it when he gets to the night fort. So again, just every single thing that George is doing is pointing us towards this giant tree organism in the night fort. So that right there is the most rock-solid part of this theory, that that giant organism that is the well and the Black Gate, that is going to be one of the central mysteries at the Night Fort. I think that's very strong. Like, there's not much else that's super well set up at the Night Fort that would take precedent over that whole system there. Now, we can go further into speculation, though, about what exactly will be found with that system. And again, I believe the idea of bodies being strapped to it is also a pretty solid idea, mostly because of the way we see the Weirwood system actually working. There are a bunch of bodies strapped to it. We see it in Bloodraven, we see it deep in Bloodraven's cave, where Bran goes down warging into Hodor, and he sees past Greenseers, who are still alive. And this is important. The Weirwoods are able to maintain these bodies, even though they can't move or speak. Which means, yes, when Melisandre uncovers these bodies, they are still likely to be alive strapped to that weirwood. And, if there is any way they have been better preserved because they are, you know, encased in ice, which is, again, a life preservation method, I think there's a pretty good chance that these bodies might be able to talk. And Melisandre might get to have a chat with some of the ancient figures who were strapped up to these trees, very specifically, her ancient counterpart, the Night's Queen. Now, before you think I'm crazy, I have very good reason to suspect that the Knight's Queen and or the Knight's King could potentially be strapped to that very specific tree. And not only that, but there is good reason to suspect that there is actually an icy counterpart to Melisandre lurking somewhere later to be revealed in our story. When George R. R. Martin had an official Melisandre figurine made, he made sure that they also made one that mirrored it, but was blue an icy blue Knight's Queen looking version of Melisandre, which to me could definitely be George giving a little hint that this figure is going to be important in the later books, and whether she's alive or just a figure of legend, I think her and Melisandre are definitely the ice and fire mirrors of each other in a lot of ways. If Melisandre is a fiery immortal shadowbinder who has all these crazy powers to birth shadows, and the Night's Queen was an icy, now immortal, shadowbinder who was birthing shadows that could potentially have been the others a long time ago, well then there would be a lot for them to talk about. Also, I suppose it is possible that even if they couldn't talk and they were just found bound there to the tree, but they were found male and female, and Melisandre was able to look at this situation and piece together everything that had happened, I think in either case, right, Melisandre at the Night Fort, surrounding this whole big system, is going to be a big reveal of some sort of the magic, however it actually works. And how I actually think it works is that, well, if these are shadow babies and they need to be permanent or need to be cast from the Weirwood, what likely happened was a male figure like the Night's King would have strapped himself up to the Weirwoods like a green seer or like we see in the television show, and then rather than just being stabbed and turned into another, there would be shadow babies birthed from him while he was stabbed to the tree, and therefore they are Weirwood Shadow Babies. So what Melisandre could be likely to find is the Knight's King himself strapped up to this tree, potentially a bunch of his sworn brothers strapped up to the tree, all potentially used as a source of male life energy to be birthing these permanent Weirwood Shadows. So we have the setup of bodies strapped to these trees that are preserved and still alive, we have the setup of male and female coming together to make shadows, which could be made at the Night Fort, with the Knight's King and Knight's Queen being male and female, all of this lines up, but we also have the idea of bodies being put into the wall as a punishment. So it would make sense that after the Knight's King was defeated, if he was indeed strapped to this giant weirwood tree, they may have taken the Knight's Queen, strapped her up to the tree as well, and just encased them all in the wall as a punishment. 
They did the same thing to the 79 Sentinels, as well as a Wildling who was trying to dig his way through the wall. They just let him keep digging, and sealed up the other side of the wall, and he was trapped in there forever. We are constantly reminded of the idea that there are bodies in the wall, they do put people into the wall, and there are bodies all strapped up to the Weirwood system. So again, it's all just lining up. There is even a line where Jon Snow tells Egret the wall is made of ice, and she says, you know nothing, Jon Snow, that wall's made of blood. So again, this could be George just directly hinting that, hey, the ice isn't the important part of the wall, it's all a giant blood magic system that's underneath the ice. And Melisandre is going to be the perfect person to get inside her head as she makes sense of all of this so that it can be easily explained to the reader. And even if you don't agree with me on what exactly is going on there magically, I think that we can all agree that's probably going to be the case. Melisandre is going to be a pretty interesting point of view to view the Night Fort through. So hopefully she gets there soon. Now, in terms of the Night's King still being alive in the books, well, we had the name obviously taken for the leader of the others and used in the television show, which seems like a little bit of an odd thing to do to take a figure out of legend and make him a very important antagonist in the story if there wasn't actually something going on with that character in the books. Now, when George was asked about this, he did clarify that the Night's King in the books is an ancient figure who is no more likely to be alive than Bran the Builder or Lan the Clever, which, honestly, to me, seems like George is sneaking around the question because is he more likely to be alive than those two? Well, what is the likelihood of them being alive? Well, when you have Bran the Builder very well connected to a giant weirwood system and magic that can apparently sustain bodies for a long time, the likelihood might not actually be anywhere near zero, right? The implication is that he is no more likely than those two, so therefore the likelihood is zero. Where in reality, the likelihood may be pretty decent that Bran the Builder is still alive strapped to a weirwood somewhere, or at least his body is still preserved somewhere strapped to a weirwood, and so therefore, the likelihood's actually not that crazy low that the Night's King could still be alive in the same way. Now, in this series so far, we've talked a little bit about the Night's King and his potential motivations, mostly pointing out how things that Bloodraven and Bran seem to be working towards are all seemingly things that line up with things the Night's King was doing. Most notably, the way that Bloodraven and Bran seem to be very powerful and in control of the system, yet in the time that they have been in charge, the others have been growing stronger, they have been getting closer to coming back, it all seems like whatever Bloodraven is doing it's all working towards similar ends to what the Night's King was doing, which could be a hint that maybe the Night's King was trying to do something correct. Potentially, the Night's King was trying to end this system, end this control by this giant Weirwood system with a bunch of bodies strapped to it, and the way that he did that was strapping himself up to the tree to take the power to birth the shadows to try and end this system. To me, that would make some sense of how so many of our main characters today seem to be taking actions that would mirror the results that the Night King got, and how all of these people have been doing all these things that have allowed the others to grow stronger and come back, when someone like Bloodraven or a time-traveling Bran would probably have the power to stop that. If we get to talk to the Night King, who is strapped up to the tree at the Night Fort, or even if just Melisandre gets to see his body there and try to piece together the details, we may actually get some hints at his motivation, and we might get some hints at all of the magic and what's actually going on here. Are the Weirwoods good? Are the Weirwoods evil? Are they just a giant magical system that has been corrupted that needs to be reborn? Lots of questions to be answered, and I think this is the place that we do it. Definitely let me know down in the comments what you think of that general idea and what you think Melisandre might learn at the Night Fort. Now in terms of what I think these bodies might have to say, we've talked about it a lot in this series so far. I think that these bodies that are stuck up to this tree, knowing George R.R. R. Martin and the themes he's been driving home throughout this series, I think these bodies are going to want this system ended. They don't want to be stuck, frozen in the wall, sustained forever alive, probably crucified to these weirwood trees on some way, right? That just seems like the imagery that would line up. Melisandre is probably going to find a bunch of bodies strapped to this tree that want this tree burned down. Melisandre is also probably going to want to burn this thing down because she thinks the weirwoods all need to be burned down because they are part of the others. And once she realizes that they are casting the others, she may even more so want to burn this thing down. So I think we might have a lot of people 
all suddenly all aligned towards this whole entire giant system might need to end. This is sort of mirroring what I think was happening in the House of the Undying, which, as I talked about in my video about that, is mirrored with the Night Fort. Drogon hears sounds in the wall at the House of the Undying that sound like rats scurrying in the wall, and he's acting just like Summer does, and the sounds are described the same way. Summer hears sounds in the wall that sound like rats, Bran thinks of the rat cook, Danny in the House of the Undying hears the sounds like rats in the walls, and you can now draw the connection to the Night Fort when you realize that. Also, when Danny arrives in the House of the Undying, like the actual hall where they're sitting, it's a hall awash in gloom. And to me, it just sounds a lot like the Night Fort. It's this big, gloomy stone hall that has these people stuck around an icy blue, corrupted, but still beating heart, right? If there are all of these people who were once living in the Night Fort, all strapped up to this giant heart tree and frozen in the wall, unable to move, well, all of these people who are sitting at the hall of the House of the Undying in shadow form are basically mirrors of that, right? They are stuck around a frozen, corrupt, still beating heart, just like these people are stuck around the corrupt heart tree that keeps them alive. Now, I think this is actually even potentially possibly a direct connection because the shadows could be also cast from these bodies within the wall. The House of the Undying could essentially be tapping into the magic of the wall itself, which is something that I've covered in other videos earlier in the series. It's one of those things that I don't know that we firmly have good evidence of, but the symbolism would all line up to the point where if it was revealed to be the case in Winds of Winter when Melisandre gets to the bottom of whatever's at the Night Fort, if it was revealed that those shadows in the House of the Undying were directly cast from the people in the Night Fort, I would think that would line up pretty directly and George would be able to tip his cap and go, Haha, it was all relevant the entire time. And if you're familiar with my beliefs on the House of the Undying and what was actually going on there, I think they lured Daenerys in there to burn them and free them from being trapped in their undying state to be used as a power source by these warlocks. She had a dragon, which had the magical power to actually destroy them, so they got her in there, and then they basically forced the dragon to burn them. And when he did, they all started raising their hands in the air and dancing. They seemed very happy to be freed from this state. I think the bodies on the tree, in the wall, will probably be very similar. Now the thing that you may be noticing, and that I have noticed as I was trying to get this video put together, is that I really can't talk about what I think is likely to happen at the Night Fort in Winds of Winter without referencing all of these other things that I've talked about throughout this entire series, and all of these other points that happened in different parts of the books. And why is that? Because it seems likely that the Night Fort is the place that George R. R. Martin is going to collapse the entire story, bring all of these plot lines together, make a bunch of big reveals that suddenly really speed up the pace of getting towards the end game of what's actually going on. This is how George likes to end his stories, he likes to have one giant thread that he can pull that's going to yank everybody back together, and the Night Fort and the Falling of the Wall seem to be that thread going forward in this story. Even characters like Arya, who I didn't really get to in this video, but was mentioned earlier in the series as how she all relates to this with the undying and the faceless men wanting to give the gift of death, all men must die, these bodies strapped to the wall are a breaking of that directly, so that is who they want Arya to kill is the people at the wall. Like, eventually that's probably the point, that's probably where her story is going. She's going to help give death to these undying bodies who are strapped into this system. Once you start to look for the threads that connect all of these characters, all of our main characters, all around this singular storyline, once George wants to pull on that thread, everything's going to come rushing back to the Night Fort, and that's why I'm so excited to see what Melisandre starts to uncover there in Winds of Winter. Definitely let me know what you think of all of that down in the comments. Thank you if you've made it this far into the video. I understand this one was kind of a lot of tangents, but there is a lot of different things that are all tangentially related to this topic, and I felt it was best to cover at the very least the most relevant ones, and hopefully it has inspired some interesting thoughts in your mind which you will share with me down in the comments. This is definitely not the last time I'll be talking about the Night Fort or what Melisandre might be getting up to there or the Knight's King and Knight's Queen, who may be coming up again pretty soon. But this is the point where I'll turn it over to you to let me know what you think of all of that. Also, there's a like and subscribe button down there if you haven't hit them already, and I'll be back with something else very soon.